to start, if you want to hold the call, and the holding is for the phone only, so that only this phone can pick up the hold, you just hit the hold button. The call is now in hold, and when you're ready to take the call back, you hit resume, or hit the blinking red light. If you'd like to transfer the call to another desk or person, and that person is ready to take the call, you would hit transfer. You would also hit lines to show all the other desks in your office, and then the person you want to transfer. Then hit transfer to complete the transfer. The call is now gone to the other desk. If you want to take a call, and put it on hold, and send it to another desk, or send it to a person who is not ready to take a call, you will need to park it. So you would hit more, then park. It's important that you pay attention to where that call is parked. And you need to tell that person the number of where it's parked. And then they would dial the, that number to pick the call up. There's also blind transfer. Blind transfer is if you want to send it to a desk and that person is, doesn't need to know who the call is, you would hit more twice, then you'll see blind transfer, hit blind transfer, and the extension you want it to transfer to. The voicemails that we are using are for a ring group that are a set of phones in your office. We will do not use individual voicemail. So please do not use this button. To access your ring group voicemail, dial 500. To set up your voicemail, you will then press 2. You're only going to want to press 3 for your external greeting. We do not use any of the other greetings. If I ask you to set up a contact that we can then access your phone from the computer side. You would go to the home button, navigate to directories, hit one for contact directory, and then you can add whomever you'd like and that will set a speed dial on your phone. If you need to reset your phone, hit the home button, go to settings, hit select for basic, then scroll down to number seven for reset phone. Hit the button again and it will reset the phone for you. This is the polycom setup. This is the main body of the polycom unit with an LCD panel and keypad. I'm just going to show you the basics of wiring and setting this up. This has an adjustable back which has three slots. You take this plastic piece and you can place it into any one of these three slots depending upon the height and adjustment that you like the angle of the phone to be. It clicks in and pulls out. Behind the, the box body of the uh, polycom unit you have your power, ethernet, and phone sources. The power is this adapter which will be plugged in and needs to be plugged in and only fits in the one round port. The phone set headset has a small phone connector and should be placed into the phone connector's adapter. The other one has a headset, and that could be as if you do get a wireless or a headset for these phones. But in this case, the handset gets plugged into the one that looks like an icon of the handset. The two in the middle, one is for a computer extension. Some of your computers may go to this. We use this as a switch, and the internet gets plugged into the first one until you hear it click. And that is the Polycom phone system.
the Cisco ATA 122 router for your fax is wired simply with four wires. The first round wire is the power. The second is the connectivity to the internet. The third is the connectivity to another device, say your copier, or your printer, and your fax. The fourth is the telephone connector that connects between this box and your fax device. To cycle the power, you would unplug the power, wait 30 seconds, and plug it back in. It will then re-register and you should have all three lights, the phone light, the internet light, and the power light illuminated. It may take a minute to reinitialize and when all three lights are lit you'll know you'll have connectivity to your fax. Now that all three are illuminated, the internet is flickering, we know we have connectivity. Now once again, we want to make sure that our phone line is connected to the back of the fax machine. And we'll show you that in a minute. Okay, this is the back of the 8720 copier printer fax. We have three plugs. The bottom plug is the power to the unit. The gray could be white, could be blue. Next cable up from the power is the ethernet connectivity, which will be connected to either the internet modem or one of the white switches. And then the top is the telephone plug. That's the same telephone plug that is connected to the black ATA Cisco uh, device that we showed earlier. Those two need to be connected directly. So once again, we have the power, Ethernet, or Internet connectivity, and then the phone. With the Cisco fax adapter, we want to make sure that this is the power, the round one is the power, the second one comes from the internet, is plugged into it, and the third one is connected either to the device or another device use, utilizing this as a switch. So we have three, potentially three, and four connectors. The first one is power, connection to the internet, connection to the device, to the internet port of the device, and then the third one is the phone line, which is the first phone line, which is connected, could be a black cable, a white cable, they're all multicolors, and it's a small thinner cable. The connector has got a small little connector tab on top. We press that in and you can easily insert it. Press it in and you can easily remove it. It clicks in, once you hear that click, you know it's in tightly. And that should be, that wire should be connected then to the device itself. And you'll see below here is the phone line and it is connected in the same manner. Make sure that it is clicked in solidly. And then you have your fax up and running. When changing ink on the 8720 it is a simple process of just lifting the inner hood, waiting for the ink cartridges to center, and at this point you can then press in and click those cartridges out and replace them by gently pressing and clicking them in as, as needed. Then we turn the hood and it will register the new cartridges. And that's it. So when making a copy or scanning in or uh, faxing something, you'll come to the home screen this is the home screen of the printer. Uh, you'll see copy, scan, photo, and fax, and then other applications. In this case, we're going to demonstrate how to do a fax. So we can actually scroll over to see fax right now. Click on that fax right now. You can then type in your number and then hit 
whether it's a color or a black and white fax, in this case it's a black fax, or if you wanted to, you could go to the, the address book and you can add somebody or select somebody from your address book. So in this case, we'll select, uh, here we have multiple ones that have already been put, put in place. We could select any one of these and the fax would then go to that particular uh, destination. If I hit my home key back, I'm back to the main screen again. If I'd like to make a scan, I can hit scan. If I wanted to scan it to my computer, I can click on computer and then I would choose the name of the computer that I wanted it to go to. Most all of these have been configured with the uh, extension of the phone to that desk so that you can easily find that main computer and it will be deposited on that desktop in a folder. If you wanted to scan to a USB, you can do that as well. You would place the USB into the side USB port of the printer located right below the logo and the label and uh, you would be able to scan right to that USB device. If you are scanning to email, uh, there is some configuration that needs to be done for scanning to email. The, uh, the unit has to be programmed with the outgoing server. Uh, if that has not been done, um, please contact us. This is the back of the computer and we might at times ask you to unplug or replug or swap out the CPU. To do that there's three main cables. The top one which is the display adapter cable. It is a special shape with an edge cut out. Am I too close? With an edge cut out and only goes in one hole. It's the second hole down from the top. Second is the Ethernet plug. The Ethernet plug has a tab. You press in, can pull out, or insert. That is for the network and for the internet connection. Next to that is a small dongle. This is the wireless communication adapter for your keyboard and mouse. And at the bottom is the power plug. This is a standard three-pronged power plug. Make those connections nice and solid. Hear the click, make sure they're in tight, and you're good to go.